So I now about to demonstrate the audio equipment that we have within the Coachman brand. Uh, on the VIP, this is the standard Pioneer system. You can upgrade if you wanted to, if you're purchasing new from ourselves, you can upgrade this system to be a DAB system, but it's an additional cost. But uh, this is just the FM radio. A couple of features on here. Firstly, I am going to say it's quite a comprehensive system. You can look at uh, YouTube and all that you need to know is which model you've got installed here. Um, and it will give you a full edge, full background education on how this system all works. But I'm going to give you a couple of uh, brief demonstrations. So the first thing I'm going to hit is the source button, uh, which brings the radio on. And at the moment we're on radio two. I'm going to try and bring it into another radio station. So I'll let it scan along by itself. I think see what it picks up. So that's radio four. If I want to keep radio four in its location, say number four, press and hold button four it flashes for a few seconds and now it's logged in so there's back to radio four let's go back to radio two there it is so that's how you program it in so that's very simple programming however when you do try to come turn this system off as it is now you can't necessarily turn the display completely off so you can press and hold source and it does that which can be annoying so i'm going to turn the radio on just press source again Back to the radio, as you can see. Turn the volume down because you don't want to hear all the background noise. The volume button, I want you to press it. Press it once, see menu. And if I turn the volume button now, you can see you get different system there. What I want to come to is the system itself. You go into it by pressing it again. So you're accessing the system. I don't want to change the language. So scroll past that one very quickly. Uh, the one I want to come to is where it says PW. There's PW and it says save and it's off. I want to change that to on. So I'm going to hit the volume button again. There we go. It's on. Now if I come back out of that system, I use this scroll key. Hit it once. There's the system. Back to system. Hit it again. Come back to the radio. And if I press and hold that source button now, the whole illumination goes off. So that's a very simple program that you might need to do on it from time to time. Just want to point out a couple of things. You have got a USB port and you have got an, a three and a half mil jack point. So if you are using iPhones, iPads, etc., etc., you can connect them by there or obviously a direct USB uh, with music already uh, programmed onto it. So it's quite, quite an easy system, but you're using that source button to change between FM to AUX to various other products. Uh, no CD on them these days. So that's on the stereo itself. But I'm just going to come along this, along this side now and I'm going to come to where the antenna is located. So this is the TV aerial and also the radio aerial. It's a combination unit. It's got three cables coming out of the base of uh, the antenna itself. The white one is for television use. The black wire is for audio use, i.e. the stereo. And the red wire is just a boost that goes up to the uh, head of the antenna head itself. Right. We also have on this bulkhead panel, we've got a booster box, so it amplifies the signal that's coming in. The normal transit location would be this pole completely retracted and the green and H section showing. And if you have that located in that direction there, it just means any flare airflow coming over the top of the vehicle isn't going to drag on the actual aerial head and cause it to lift. So you've obviously got that locked down. So when you arrive on site, just slacken that off. Just take note of on the campsite that you're at where everybody else's aerial is pointing because it gives you a rough idea of where the best reception is. So pointing in the right direction. I know something cold feel for me is roughly over that direction. So that's the position I'm in now. And just slightly tighten that nut up. You would then turn on the booster, the amplifier itself, which is a little switch on the top left hand edge. And I also would rotate that dial, that little dial there, so it's on maximum boost. So it does rotate, as you can see, and maximum boost is turning it clockwise till it stops. That's on maximum. If you turn it anti-clockwise, you're actually turning it into a lower amplification. The white cable itself comes into the booster box, as you can see, and it will say on the booster box, antennae in. So that's obviously now going into the system and two black wires are coming out and it's going into uh, two separate locations for a TV. 
So I'm just going to draw your attention over to this position over here onto this uh, work surface area because located in this area we've got a double mains point, we've got a 12 volt uh, power supply, we've also got a coaxial point, we've also got an F connector, a satellite connector. And then just also located, again, for charging of phones and things like that, we've got a double USB system uh, located on that side panel there. So quite well equipped. There is a second location for a TV to be, which is going to be in the fixed bed area on this particular van layout. It's on the bulkhead panel where I serve some of the light switches were. We may refer back to that shortly. So just coming back over to the aerial. I want to point out one more loose cable that you can see within this uh, panel area and it's going to be this wire here it's not attached to anything it's not meant to be as such it's for an outside aerial supply so some sites that you might go to uh, do provide their own aerial connection uh, onto the post so all that you're doing you're connecting to the side of your caravan through this battery box area located underneath here and you're removing the white cable and putting that black cable in so the power supply is coming into the battery box through this black cable into that location there. So you're moving the white one, putting that one in, and that gives you an outside power source, again, leading to your two television points that you see within this vehicle. When you do come to transit, go back into transit. So you finish using the te television, turn off the booster box. Oh, there is one bit I didn't tell you about. Sorry about this. Uh, in certain areas, you can uh, change the pitch of the aerial from a horizontal plane to a vertical plane. And the way you do that is by using this crank handle and you turn it like so. And you can now see that it's changing to a red with a V in it. That's the maximum it will go. It won't go any more than that. So that's changed the plane from horizontal to vertical. And in certain areas within the UK, you do find better reception on the vertical plane. Just try it. Or if you see others using it in a vertical plane, you know you've got to put your area into vertical. Back to horizontal, like so. That is the transit. You're bringing that pole completely retracted. You can't leave it. It won't retract fully on vertical. You've got to make sure it's in the horizontal plane. And you're just tightening up that lock nut just to stop that from lifting in transit. So that's the aerial system on this particular caravan. Thank you.